Okay, in this lecture we're going to discuss post hoc analysis for ANOVA. So post hoc analyses are statistical tests that will conduct to indicate exactly where differences exist after we come up with a significant ANOVA result. So we ran our test in our ANOVA, we had four groups, and um, we had a statistically significant effect. And so we know that significant differences exist, but where those differences are, we're not sure. There may be a significant difference between two groups only, or significant differences may exist between more of the groups. So we need to find that out. So in the example uh, that we went over, um, the results of the, of the, of the ANOVA uh, indicate a statistically significant difference among the four groups. So we need to find out where those differences are. And in order to do that, uh, a further analysis is necessary. So just keep in mind, and the most common problem I see with post hoc analyses is that uh, people will run them regardless of the result of the ANOVA. But you only do post hoc tests if and only if the ANOVA results are statistically significant. If they're not significant, there's no reason to do them. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing the group mean of one group to the group means of all the other groups. When you work uh, in SPSS, there are many different ways to conduct post hoc analyses, but the most common type and most widely ex uh, accepted method is the Tukey method for multiple comparisons. And so uh, the, the, the Tukey method uh, tests all possible pairwise comparisons and controls for type 1 error. So if we have four groups, um, the number of possible comparisons conducted in Tukey is the number of groups times the number of groups minus 1 divided by 2. So with four groups, 4 times 4 minus 1, 3, uh, is 12 divided by 2, and that's 6. So there's six possible pairwise comparisons. Broken down, it looks like this. You know, group 1 to group 2, group 1 to group 3, group 1 to group 4, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, and 3 to 4. Remember, we talked about this, about why we don't run repeated t-tests. Uh, repeated t-tests do not control for type 1 error, but running an ANOVA and then looking at um, uh, a Tukey post hoc comparison will control for that type 1 error. So what I'm going to show you on, on this slide is the formula if you were to do this by hand. And uh, uh, I go into more detail in the note pack. Um, what I do want you to see here are, are two elements. Again, every statistical test compares differences between means, and this is no exception. Uh, in addition, how do we control for type 1 error? Well, we're taking this mean square within term, that's our error term, and uh, we're providing a, a computation that accounts for sample sizes in the groups, as well as the number of groups. So that's how we're controlling for type 1 error, is that we're, we're, uh, m we're addressing that error term, or we're decreasing that error term, because we're running only uh, uh, two groups out of the four. So um, if you ever have to do this by hand, it's always best to start with the two largest mean differences, you know, the groups with the largest mean differences, uh, and, when, uh, and, and then work your way down to the smaller mean differences. When a group comparison is not statistically significant with uh, one group, there's no reason to test a smaller group because it's all about the magnitude of the difference between the means. So if you're interested in learning more about the hand computation, uh, you can look at that in the note pack on page 14. This is what the output looks like uh, in SPSS. And notice uh, here, um, SPSS is stupid. Why? Because it compares group 1 to group 2, but then it compares group 2 to group 1. Notice nothing changes. The mean differences are still the same. The standard error is still the same. The p-value is still the same. So you have to look at your output carefully and make sure that you when you compare group 1 to group 2, you don't compare group 2 to group 1 um, as well. So just look at each, each 
group comparison one time. So here looking at one, uh, one to two is not significant, one to three is not significant, one to four is. Um, we've already looked at two to one, so two to three is not significant, two to four is. Uh, th three to four is also significant. So notice all when, when all the groups are being compared to group four, they're significant, but otherwise um, they're not. So group group four with that mean of 2.4, that was that was the key, and that's why our nova was significant. We can uh, tease that out and say, you know, group four, that control group, is the reason why our our nova is significant. Another term uh, I, I want to teach you about is uh, a priori analyses. It refers to the researcher's decision to evaluate only specific groups for comparison before data are even collected. So uh, reasons for this include the, the desire to compare uh, only uh, to one comparison group. For example, maybe we only want to make comparisons to a control group. We don't care which treatment groups are more uh, significant from each other. Um, or maybe we want to combine groups and then make a comparison to another group. For example, um, Let's say I have three treatment groups and one control group, and I only want to compare the treatment groups to a control group. So my a priori comparisons would be treatment one to control, treatment two to control, treatment three to control. Remember, the fewer tests that I uh, do, uh, the less likelihood I am of making a type one error. So it's good to reduce the number of tests if you can, but this has, this has to be done before your analyses. So when I'm doing this um, with uh, one group to another, I call this a simple contrast comparison. But when I combine groups, it's called a complex contrast comparison. For example, I can combine the means of all three treatment groups and compare them to the control group and say all treatment groups have a significant difference from the control group. This way I'm only doing um, one post hoc test instead of doing a Tukey, which is you know, six post hoc tests. The most powerful type of a priori analysis is called a planned orthogonal comparison. And the advantages of the, of, of the planned orthogonal comparison is that there's no overlapping variance. Um, and the number of comparisons uh, is uh, the number of groups minus one. So this gives us what's called an orthogonal design. It increases statistical power and requires that we think ahead and plan our contrasts. Uh, ahead. The reality is, is that uh, these are uncommon uh, in, in, in the type of research that we do and uh, there are usually uh, less complex ways to compare groups such as just doing a t-test. So uh, you're not likely to run into these uh, but I at least wanted to introduce you to the terms in the event that you do.